next Sunday morning. Um, you can tune in to Zoom um, to get that um, Sunday school, 9 a.m. next Sunday. We'll also be returning back to church next Sunday at 11 a.m. Uh, we will have limited capacity. Um, if you are do come and you're not able to get in the church, you can listen to the radio station. It is 85 point, 87.9, 87.9, 87 um, and you also will be able to sign up to attend the next um, Sunday service if you're not able to get into um, next Sunday service. Thank you.
Yeah. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Psalms 138. Psalms 138. And it reads, I will praise you, O Lord, with my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name. For your love and your faithfulness, for you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and <clears throat> stopped hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord, as humble as I know how. Lord, I come thanking you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for your son, Lord, Jesus the Christ. Lord, I thank you for just allowing him, Lord, to give his life, Lord, so that we could have eternal life. Lord, and I just want to say thank you for that. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this past year, Lord, to be able to make it to another Resurrection Sunday. Lord, there have been a lot of trials, Lord, and tribulations, Lord, over the past year, Lord. Lord, there have been a lot of trials and tribulations, Lord, over the past month, week, day, Lord. Lord, but at the end of the day, Lord, through all of those trials and tribulations, Lord, we still have a Father that we can come to, Lord, and that is your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, for all of that, I just want to say thank you because we serve an awesome God. Lord, you have been good to us throughout the years, Lord. You still allow us to have breath. You still allow us to have sight. You still allow us to be able to hear and taste, Lord. And Lord, you allow us to be able to walk and stand on our two feet, Lord. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you forgive us, Lord, for all of our sins, Lord. Things, Lord, that we may do, Lord, that we may not be aware of. Lord, whenever we don't know our left hand from our right hand, Lord. Lord, you still have that grace for us. And that's enough to just say thank you. Thank you for that Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we want to pray for those, Lord, that may be going through things right now, Lord. Lord, because each and every day we're going through something. Lord, I've been told before that either we're, we're going in, we're in it, or we're coming out of it. And Lord, and while we're in it and in the midst of it and coming out of it, Lord, we still have to give you the praise. And I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord, because you have been mighty good to us. You have been great, Lord. And Lord, I want to pray for this church family, Lord. It is good to be able to stand on this church ground one more time, Lord. Lord, we have been away for 
a whole year, Lord. And Lord, we just still want to come and give you some praise, Lord, at this church, Lord. And Lord, and if you see fit, Lord, you will allow us to be in here next Sunday, worshiping and praising your name, Lord. And that's enough to just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are an awesome God. Lord, I want to just pray for our pastor, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you continue to strengthen him and his family, Lord. It's been a low road, Lord. But, Lord, you have seen us through. And I just want to say thank you for it all. Thank you, Lord. This is my prayer, Lord. In your son Jesus' name. Amen.
still been good. God has been faithful and God is deserving of all of our praise and our response to him should be thank you. We've been counted a lot since our last Easter celebration. Hemologist said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I'm grateful that death nor grave couldn't hold our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He got up just like he said. And we have assembled on this day to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's enough to tell the Lord, thank you. Our scripture reading this morning is found in Matthew 
chapter 28, and we're going to read the first 10 verses. That's Matthew 28, beginning at verse number 1. A very familiar passage of scripture. There you find these words. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid for I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then he said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. One of the reasons with us this Resurrection Sunday from the thought, Jesus is risen as he said. Jesus is risen as he said. The verses that I read in your hearing, most of us, or at least many of us, have heard them read numerous of times over and over again, possibly from our childhood, even to adulthood. We have heard these verses read. Many of us can reflect on resurrection services in the past as we celebrated what the world called Easter, but believers called the Resurrection Sunday. The time when our personal Savior got up from the grave after being crucified and placed in a tomb our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has risen as he said. I can't speak for anybody else, but no matter how many times I hear this story, I still get excited. I still reflect on what the Lord has done for us. It's just like hearing the birth of Jesus. No matter how many times you hear it, you are to always be in awe of what the Lord has done for us. It should leave us in a place of joy and excitement as we, we reflect on a Savior who gave his life that we all might have eternal life. We ought to get excited about that when we look back over our lives. No matter how many times we read it, no matter how many times I preach from it, I'm still just as excited as when I heard it the first time and understood its meaning. 
We should never get tired of hearing the story about the resurrection. For it is the cornerstone or the foundation or the bedrock of our faith. Because if it wasn't for the resurrection, there wouldn't be eternal life. Think about it for a minute, my brothers and my sisters. Paul deals with it in his writing to the church at Corinth, saying Jesus is the first fruit of that kind who God brought back to life and died no more. I'm grateful that Jesus not only provided a, a forgiveness for all of our sins, but Jesus provided eternal life for all of those who believe in him. As we look at the text that I read in your hearing, we get to see the response of the first people that was confronted with the news of a risen Jesus and also encountered him as well. As we look at Matthew's account of the resurrection of Jesus, we find that the Sabbath has passed. And according to the text, it is the first day of the week around Sunday. And the text that began to dawn, and I want to say something about that phrase in the text. It was not just the dawning of uh, uh, another Sunday morning, the beginning of the first day of the week, but it was the dawning of a new day and a new era as it related to humanity having an opportunity to enter into a right relationship with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't miss that. It's not just the dawning of another Sunday morning, but uh, the resurrection day represent the dawning of a new era. Uh, since the fall of mankind in the garden, God has finally established the only true way to enter back into a right relationship with him. And so Matthew records that, that it's not only the dawning of the first day of the week, but it's the dawning of a new era. And it's fitting the soul. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary was there when Jesus was hanging on the cross. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary was there when Jesus was laid in a borrowed tomb. It's only fitting at the beginning of the dawning of the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary shows up at the tomb. Matthew doesn't record why they showed up, but if we would read the text and if we would look at the other account, they didn't show up expecting to see it at the tomb. Some of the writers record and allude to the fact that they showed up to give Jesus a proper burial because they had to take him down because the Sabbath was approaching and, and they placed him in the tomb with the intention to come back after the Sabbath had ended to give Jesus a proper burial. But they weren't thinking about what the master said over and over again as he graced their presence and he would allude to the fact every now and then to say that the Son of Man is going to be betrayed and he's going to be handed over to the authorities and he's going to be crucified. But on the third day, he will rise again. It's the third day. I know it's the first day of the beginning of the week, but it's the third day that Jesus had been lying there and he got up just as he said on the third day. These women going to the tomb and the Bible said that there was a great earthquake. An angel descended from heaven and rolled back the stone from the door. And the Bible said he sat on it. Isn't it amazing how even at the birth of Jesus, God sent an angel to announce the arrival of his son. Here at the tomb, the women goes to the tomb. God sent an angel to roll back the stone from the door of the tomb, not so that Jesus can leave the tomb, but that those on the outside 
could have evidence that Jesus was no longer occupying the tomb. Uh, Jesus got up just like he said. And so when these women got there, the angel spoke to them in verse 5 and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know who you seek, Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. These women did not come with the anticipation of receiving the news that they received. No doubt in my mind, looking at all of the other accounts, these women came to give a proper burial. But the angels reminded them of what the Lord had shared with them periodically as he sat with them. He would ease in his ultimate purpose for coming into the world. And that was to die for the sins of the world. But Jesus understood that the cross and the grave was not the end of the story. He died for us so that all of our sins could be forgiven. He died for us so that we all could have a clean slate. He died for us so that all of us could have an opportunity now to be able to come to God so that we can have a right relationship. But he got up to give us eternal life. And so the angel challenged these women to believe Jesus is risen as he said. Sometimes we forget about the promises that the Lord makes. And sometimes circumstances may rob us of believing that God is still able to do all that he promised. And I can imagine in my mind they were not thinking about the promise that Jesus made. But the angel challenged them to believe Jesus is risen. As a matter of fact, they, they tell them he is not here. For he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. In other words, if you don't believe us, come and look and see for yourself. The last time Mary Magdalene and the other Mary saw Jesus, they saw Jesus lying in the tomb. And so the angels reminded them of what the Lord said. And he said, come see where the Lord lay. It's one thing when somebody tell you uh, something that the Lord said, but it's another thing when you come and see for yourself and believe that the Lord is risen. So they were challenged to believe that the Lord is risen. We all will be challenged to believe in the promises of God. And no matter how bad things look, we still got to be willing to believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that God will make good on the promise. And I like what the angels did. They said, if you don't believe what we said, come see where the Lord lay. And I like when the women came and they saw for themselves where the Lord laid. I can believe in my mind that when they saw that the Lord was gone, there was something on the inside of them that called them to get all excited after remembering the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But finally seeing that the tomb is empty and you got an angel telling you what the Lord said and bringing back to your remembrance that God is making good on his word. So we got to believe that the Lord is risen just like he said. And I like what the angel did after he told them when God shares something with us, he commissioned us to go tell somebody else the good news about what the Lord 
God has done. He didn't go tell the women to preach, but he called the women to share a word with everybody. He told them to go share the word with the disciples that he would meet them over in Galilee. Sometimes we get all tangled up and tied up in the fact that the Lord has commissioned all of us to share the good news of the resurrection of Jesus. That don't mean you're going to be an ordained minister. But it does mean that you have a responsibility to share the good news that Jesus has risen. We all ought to be able to tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that these women responded. They responded to this news with faith. How do you know that they responded with faith, preacher? I'm glad you asked that question. Around verse number 8, it says, So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. In other words, they didn't only just believe that Jesus had risen from the dead, but they were faith were put into action. They responded and they put feet to their faith and began to run and tell the disciples the good news that Jesus is alive. Now you got to understand it had to be faith because the only thing they had was an empty tomb and a word from the angels. But that was enough to call these women to run and tell those disciples that Jesus was going to meet them over in Galilee. So not only are we challenged to believe that Jesus is risen, we got to put our faith into action and believe that Jesus is risen by sharing the good news of a risen Savior. Not only do we suppose to share the good news, but when we believe Jesus is alive, Jesus will make himself known in our lives. I'm glad that Jesus didn't leave it just knowing that the tomb was empty, but while they were on their way to share the good news, the Bible said that Jesus met them along the way. And when Jesus met them along the way, the Bible said the first word that Jesus shared with these women was rejoice. In other words, be glad. I'm glad that Jesus showed up. I'm glad that Jesus left the tomb, but I'm glad that Jesus made himself known in the lives of these women while they were on their way to share the good news. You know, some of us want to wait on the Lord by sitting still, but I've learned if you do what the Lord told you to do, and you respond in faith while you're on your way doing what God tells you to do, the Lord will make himself known in your life. I'm glad that these women had an encounter with Jesus on their way to tell the disciples the good news and the only response that we can give the Lord when he showed up in our life is worship the women bowed down at his feet and the Bible said they began to worship the Lord I mean the only thing we can do when we find out that God is a God that keep his word we ought to be able to fall down and worship we ought to be able to humble ourselves in the posture to be able to say thank you that is not just so in my mind I don't just have a word but I've had an encounter with the living Jesus and the only proper response you can give to a savior who conquered death and grave is to bow down at his feet and began to worship his name I don't know about you but I'm glad that the tomb was empty I'm glad that somebody shared with me that he's alive. I'm glad that I heard that word. I received that word in my heart. And when I received that word in my heart, Jesus made himself known in my life. And I'm glad that I know that he's alive today. I'm glad that I know that Jesus is risen as he said. Do you know him for yourself this morning? Have you tried him in the free part of your sins? He's a mighty good friend that'll stay closer than a brother. He'll give you joy, unspeakable joy. I'm glad I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that my Redeemer lives. Every now and then I can feel him down in my soul. And the only adequate response is to bow down. Of all of our praise. I don't know why you showed up 
this morning. But I showed up to praise him. I showed up because it's another resurrection Sunday that the Lord has allowed me to see. And I showed up right like to praise his name because he's worthy of all of my praise. He died so that I can live. He died so that all of my sins could be forgiven. He died but it won't be long when I have to meet the grave. It's not the end because he got up. He gonna get up. That same Jesus, that same Jesus that died for our sins got up. And one day, that same Jesus that got up from the grave, just like he said, is coming back for all of those that believe that he is the son of God and that he died for our sin and he is risen as he said I don't know about you I never get tired of hearing about what the Lord has done for me I owe the Lord so much He's been so good to me. And the only adequate response to a risen Savior is humble submission and worship because he's worthy of all of our praise. He is risen, as he said. These women were challenged to believe Jesus is risen. These women put their faith or belief into action by quickly leaving with a message burning in their souls about a really risen Savior mixed emotions, fearing with having an encounter with an angel and having great joy of hearing the good news. And they ran to bring Jesus' disciples' word. And while they were on their way, Jesus met them along the way and told them to rejoice. And these women bowed humble submission and worship the risen Savior. I'm glad that he is alive. He calls us to rejoice but yet he gives all of us a commission. Verse 10 said then Jesus said to them do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there you will see me. I want to make sure I make my point clear because so often there's so much confusion as it relates to scripture. These verses were not a commission to preach but to share the good news we all have that because so many of us want to get off the hook and we want to leave it to lay people and ordained clergy to share the gospel ordained clergy has a responsibility through their ordination but every believer have been given the responsibility to share the good news with the dying world. And you don't need ordination for that. Don't misunderstand me. I didn't make the point that God didn't call women to preach because I know some folks will take that out of context. Said, well, the preacher said that God didn't call them women to preach. He didn't. He called them women to share the, the, the news. As a matter of fact, the angels told them first to go tell the disciples to meet Jesus said he'll meet them in Galilee. And then Jesus come right behind the angel and echo what he said. 
I'm going to call the preach. That was a commission to share. God can call whomever he desires to preach, be it male or female. It doesn't make any difference. God do the calling and the ordaining. That's the point I'm trying to make. This wasn't a call to preach. It was a call to share the good news. And we all been called to share that. I want to make that point clear because sometimes we miss the point and we make things say what we want them to say to satisfy what we want to hear. But every believer has been given the responsibility and the commission by Christ to share the good news. And the good news is God gave his son and his son gave his life so that we all can have eternal life. John 3.16 said, It best God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Truly the Lord is good. Perhaps you're listening to us today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Well now I want to extend this opportunity. That same Jesus that got up from the grave. He got up for you. He got up for me. He got up for the whole world. So we all could have eternal life. But it's sad that he did that for us. But so many of us have not accepted that yet. Perhaps you're in that place today and you've heard what Jesus did and you want to accept him as your personal savior so that you can receive the salvation that God has provided for us through him. This is how you get it. We all need it. We all have sin. We all have come short of God's glory. And one day we all will have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for all the deeds that we have done in this life, be it good or bad. We all got to stand. The difference between those that have accepted Christ and those that have not accepted Christ is that those that have accepted Christ, God is going to welcome them into his kingdom, not because of the work that they've done, but because they believe on his son, Jesus Christ, and because they believed him and accepted him as their Lord and Savior, God is going to welcome them in his kingdom. Those that don't accept Christ as their personal savior, when they stand before the judgment seat, God is gonna say, depart from me, I know you're not workers of iniquity. That means that your fate has been sealed. Eternal separation, eternal damnation without a do-over. That's it. All because you refuse to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So right where you are, if you believe in your heart and you desire to be saved, if you just do this right where you are, Lord, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins and save me. Come into my life. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son and I believe that he died for my sins. And I believe that you raised him from the dead on the third day. Romans 10 and 9 said, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you've done that, beloved, today and you believe that, according to Scripture, you're saved. Salvation is not based on a feeling, but salvation is based on making a conscious decision. You responded to the invitation of salvation and you believed it and you received it and now you've entered into a right relationship with God through his son Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you now as we celebrate another Resurrection Sunday, a day of liberation, a day that we celebrate because Jesus, at the beginning of the week, faced the crowd crying, Hosanna. But before the week ended, 
That same crowd tried to crucify him. And it brings us to this place. The ending and the beginning of a new era. Man now has a right to the tree of life. Not because he deserved it, but because of your grace and your mercy. You provided it through your son, Jesus. And as we celebrate another resurrection Sunday, we just want to humble ourselves in humble reverence and submission just to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, providing you a sacrificial lamb who took the sins of the world away and then you raised him from the dead on the third day so that not only our sins are forgiven but because he got up we too can have eternal life now and for that God we pause now to say thank you we pray for those God that have not yet received it even after hearing it refuse over and over again to accept your son, our Savior, as Lord and Savior in their lives. Stir their hearts, Lord, and move them to the place that at some point before death comes, they make a constant decision to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And then God move in our hearts that we might go out in the hedges and the highways and share this good news about a risen Savior who gave his life so that we all might have eternal life. In Jesus' precious name we pray and we all say it. Amen. As we enter into our communion service today, we want to acknowledge 1 Corinthians chapter 11 as our scripture reading, beginning at verse number 23. That's 1 Corinthians 11 and 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. After Jesus had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and told them to divide it among themselves. And when they divided it among themselves, Jesus took it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. And often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. And they all ate together. Like man after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is a new covenant of my blood, which is shed it for you. And often as you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. And they all drank together. I pray that as you reflect on this week, as we think about God's promises, we got to believe even when it seems impossible. And then once we believe, we got to put our faith in action. And as we put our faith in action to do what the Lord said, the Lord will make himself known in our lives. Be blessed. Enjoy this week. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Let us receive this blessing from the Lord. Now by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, may it rule, may it abide with all of us this week 
and forevermore. And we all said amen, amen, amen. amen. God bless you. Thank y'all so much. Now we got now. Again, thank y'all so much. What you do, we we got.